You know, welcome folks to another modern video. We're gonna be playing some amulet because the new cards are live on MTGO as of right now. And we're gonna be going uh, bananas over the ape dinosaur. That is Kogla and Yidaro, I guess. It's a uh, two red, red, green, green. So six total mana for a seven, seven. When it ETBs, uh, you choose one. It, it, it gains trample, trample and haste until the end of turn, or it fights target creature you control. And then it, has, it also has an activated ability for two red green. You discard it from your hand. You destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. You shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. Then you draw a card. So, a lot of the back here. We have a six mana seven seven, which means that is this is tutorable removal. Expensive, sure. This is definitely an expensive card, but it's tutorable removal. It's also a hasty uh, trampling and uh, a hasty and trampling threat, even under a blood moon. And uh, it also has the activated ability of replacing itself and destroying an artifact and an enchantment. And then it shuffles itself back in, meaning that you can tutor for it multiple times as well. So at this point, it feels like we are kind of uh, in a spot where cards like Reclamation Sage are just never ever going to see the light of day ever again, uh, or like a Foundation Breaker, things like that. Um, so this card seems very solid, it has a lot of potential. I'm going to be starting off with two cards, uh, two copies, because I really want to see how easy and how effective it is. I have uh, changed the mana base a little bit in order to accommodate for it. Uh, again, like we're gonna be trying to cast this uh, off of uh, Blood Moon mana anyway, so we don't need that many uh, actual red sources. But uh, we may want to actually hard cast this thing every now and then, so it's good to have the option. So we're gonna have uh, four copies of Gruel Turf, one Boris Garrison, and uh, we have the second copy of Valakut, which is you know mana fixing for the monkey. And of course, we also have two Cavern of Souls in the main deck and a third copy in the sideboard. Uh, all of these cards actually help us uh, cast the. The monkey. Uh, unfortunately, we do still want to have access to four basics. I was considering that in a stomping ground, but ended up ended up uh, going against it. The reason being, you still need the actual green source uh, in order to be able to to use this. Uh, but the fact that this is instant speed and this is uh, uncounterable makes it a great great deal, particularly against decks like Murktide. Uh, we the rest of the deck list is uh, similar to the stuff that I've been playing lately, so uh, nothing too interesting to see. Uh, three copies of Mike's in Gardens. After uh, testing and trying out the card as four of, I think that three is the number that I've been the happiest with so far. Uh, but uh, you know this this may may change. But I, I'm not a big fan of just going too all in, and Mike's in Garden kind of forces you a little bit of going too all in on the whole amulet aspect of things. Uh, and that means that cards like Force of Vigor then just completely destroy you, right? So I think it's nice to not have to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, the rest of the deck is pretty much uh, what we've been playing for a while since you know we have realized that this is uh, the, the, the quote-unquote stock way to build amulet. But excited to try out uh, this list. We're gonna see whether this uh, the, the the ape dinosaur turtle can actually get there. Uh, if you're enjoying the, the content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you for round number one all right welcome to round number one and this hand is pretty sketchy um i think i keep it in the blind it's not gonna win for a while which is kind of awkward but i think triple saga potentially quadruple saga means that we're gonna be able to do many many things a couple of turns from now playing against versus bubble dot deck apparently this merc tide Probably not, because he tapped it with foot heels. Okay, it's this. Oh, Shadow. Is Shadow back? All right. I've always been a big fan of Shadow. I think it's a really fun deck. I lose to it, but oh, just draw perfect. Sounds great. Um, I'd like to draw perfect. Thank you very much. So we're going to have like a trillion mana. That's a DRC. One and better have a discard spell, because we're about to go off. A removal spell doesn't really hurt me. They play bubble number three. That enables... No, it doesn't enable the delirium. My bad. All right. They have a shadow. That's threatening. That's very threatening. Can we kill here? We can't. Can't kill from here, but... I'm going to be able to do some stuff on some things. So let's play my amulet. And then I think I'm going to go... I think I just play Growth Chamber, play Asusa, 
and then I just play Growth Chamber, play Asusa, bouncing the Growth Chamber, and I just play Saga, and then I Vesuva my Saga. It makes my it makes my uh, my Colossus worse, but I think it's fine. Allo gives allows me to get a token. We're gonna have seven mana next turn, but no double green, so that's awkward. Another DRC. Not gonna have access to Asusa anymore, meaning that Boseijuin doesn't really do anything. Actually, I should have played the Boseiju so I could just hard cast this Colossus. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. I should have actually should have actually done that instead. That would have been much better. Even like playing the Vesuva copying my opponent's land would have given me a green source. Man, I'm I'm losing my touch, clearly. I think we take the chump here. I want to be as far away from as far away from dying as I can possibly be. So stack triggers, float a mana here, and get another amulet, play a bounce, and we're gonna get a couple of constructs here. So that hopefully prevents me from dying. Opponent did not have a removal spell, so I have to assume that they don't have a removal spell. And now next turn we go off. Opponent could top dig exactly Thoughtseize. That would be bad for me. If they top dig exactly Thoughtseize, that's bad for me, but I guess I'm gonna have four amulets. Liliana of the Veil. Vale. That's not a card. Sacrifice a creature. Okay. Got me. Well, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I guess even if their last card is Thoughtsies, I get nine mana off of this, so I can just um, I can just tutor for Titan because I'm gonna be popping off and just getting. Oh, I can just you know draw the best the best card, of course. Get amulet number three, get amulet number four, and now we're gonna get to do the thing, which is gonna be very enjoyable. Oh man, it's gonna be so much clicking, so much clicking. So this is just John Shadow. I've not seen this deck in so long. Oh no, my thing died. Uh, triggers, 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 and triggers. Um, it's kind of a whiff, huh? We also don't have Vesuva, so now we're stuck. <laughs> so I guess we are not going to be able to win this turn. Oh no, it goes all the way to the beginning every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to click all the way to the left just so I can stack my triggers properly. This is fun. This is so much fun. Look at this. Okay, now I think we can just stack. Yeah, we can just stack everything in a, in a random order. Oh, baby. Oh, Moto, please stay with me. Stay with me, Moto. <laughs> my opponent didn't, didn't even let me do the thing. They, they, just, they just know they're dead. They are. They, they were. <laughs> Uh, but that's just funny. Um, okay, cool. Game number two. So we want explosives. We probably want this member. We definitely want endurances. Probably want fire spout even. The question is, do we want Kogla and Yidaro? Yidaro, whatever. Definitely don't want Colossus. Uh, I can see us cutting one saga. Cut the Cavern of Souls. I don't think I care for the Kogla and Yidaro. I kind of do like the trackers, though. Just lowering my curve seems seems nice. Um, we can cut... Let's cut one amulet. I want the gracers. We can cut one explore. Maybe, one, maybe only one fire spout. Maybe none, actually. Maybe none. Just cut a summoner's pact. Call it a day. There's an argument also for cutting a Mycosynth Gardens as opposed to a Saga, but as you can see, you know, hands like this, ha Saga does have the higher upside. Uh, it, we do get uh, kind of destroyed by a card like um, Alpine Moon, right? Please no monkey. All right. So they're going to take my Primeval Titan here. Really the only thing that makes sense. I am a little bit more afraid. I th Oh, they take Gracer? Do they have Surgical or something? Like what's what's the deal there? Or maybe, maybe, oh, maybe they do have the Alpine Moon. So if they do have the Alpine Moon, they just destroy my Saga here. But, and Gracer is the one that allows me to, to get back on it the fastest. Green Source. Easy Green Source. The easiest Green Source I've ever seen. Okay, perfect. So we get to spend this turn to explore. 
Ha, huh. well, that's cool. Yeah, I think I want to do that instead of... I think if they do have Alpine Moon, we I lose anyway, so there's no reason to play around Alpine Moon. So I think this is fine. Tar fire my face. Aggro, I like it. Dashed monkey. Ouch. Take seven. Exile an amulet. Oh man. Play a shadow. That's a lot of stuff my opponent did there. Um so I think I want to. If I float a mana here, I get to go get an amulet. Yeah, I guess I can't actually make a construct here, so yeah, let's just float a mana. And we're going to just get an amulet. Uh, I guess we can just Titan here. We have three mana, four, five, six. Yeah, we actually can Titan. And I, am I supposed to swing is the question. If I swing, I go down. they go down to one. And I lose to what's his name? But it's probably fine if that's the case. Yeah. So play Growth Chamber, untap. Float mana, bounce, replay growth chamber, float mana, six mana, bounce forest, cast prime time. Yeah, I think we do attack. We have two blockers. Hmm. Actually, is that is that the case? Because I'm probably gonna bojugabog my opponent on the attack trigger. So if I do attack, if my opponent has two removal space spells, I lose. The problem is, like, my opponent could just have Terminate, and that puts me in such a bad spot. So let, let's think about this. So if I don't attack, then I Bojukibog plus Tolera West here. Next turn, this pops. I get a second amulet. I'm up, um, I have two amulets in play and five mana. I play a Bounce Land that's up to nine mana. I get to cast another Primeval Titan. Yeah, okay. Let's go Bojukibog plus Tolera West. Target you. This means an holy heat is no longer a concern. So it needs to be exactly terminate. And Goif is now smaller. Death Shadow is far from lethal. We know one of my opponent's cards is a monkey which doesn't do anything anymore. I think this is the better line. I think attacking actually puts me at a higher risk of dying. While here, what my opponent's shadow is only a 4 4. Even if they do have something like a Timur Vital Rage, I just don't care. I just soak up enough damage. So, yep, got there. Round number two. Uh, how do we like this hand? <sighs> Turn four, Titan on the play with a Dryad in play. Seems reasonable. I think we lead on Boseju here, and we pass it back. The reason to lead on Boseju is if I find the Gracer, I just get to cast it. Basic planes, string withdrawn. So playing against Hammer, Boseju hopefully going to be pretty good. Growth Chamber, Balance Boseju, say go. Ink Moth Nexus. Ha. Huh. Welding Jar. And Stoneforge. Okay. So do I play my opponent having... Oh, Nettle Cyst. Okay, so I don't play around it. Yeah. So I think I don't play around my opponent uh, having me killed here. So I'm just going to go Basic Forest. Play Dryad. And I guess... Because I drew Vesuva, I'm supposed to go Vesuva. No, no, actually, that doesn't work. Um, I think I just play out Bojugabog here. The reason to Vesuva copy Nygmoth next is to have an extra blocker, but I think I, I, it's probably better value for me to hold on to the Vesuva here. I definitely want to like do this so I can actually trigger Valakut. Um, and, and this is better if I do top deck, specifically Amulet. Like, if I do top the Camille, I think I am probably guaranteed to win. Okay, so they do play out the Nettle Cyst. And now what? I mean, I can beat this. I can definitely beat this. Uh, that's a good draw. Okay, so play that. I mean, I guess any untap land would have been a good draw, huh? Play the other land. And here is a Primeval Titan. Please, please do not mana type me. Thank you. All right, perfect. Just going to get double Valakut here. Wipe things up. So, Valakut Giver, Valakut Thopter, Valakut Stoneforge, and I guess I Valakut Face. So, always yes, always yes, always yield. So, at this point, I don't need the, the Titan anymore. If the Titan dies, I don't care. The only thing I really value is the, uh, the, the Dryad, because I can just clear the board from here. 
or just go face, right? Opponent's gonna save something. They do save the Thopter, which makes sense because he's the one that can actually get in for damage. But this means we get to kill the Giver, we get to kill the um, the Stoneforge, which means no instant speed shenanigans. We do die, I guess, to... We do die to um, something crazy, like... Uh, specifically, I guess uh, the, the little guy doesn't matter, like the, the two-drop guy doesn't matter, the Paladin uh, is, is is not good enough, but uh, Sigarda said into Hammer would kill me, because Ink Moth. But I think we got him here, so we don't we don't even need to go to combat. Here's the Vesuva, Kopi Valakut, face you, play Saga, face you. Looks lethal to me. Game number two. Uh, so I want force, one explosives. Uh, we can't have too many good cards in this matchup now, so it's kind of awkward. Um, I don't think I want fire spout. I think I do want cola. I think I do want to give a shot to the to the good old ape dinosaur. Um, I don't want colossus. I was drinking cola. It's got bojugabog, and I'm not a huge fan of this member in this kind of matchup. They do have giver which makes me a little bit more interested in the card but i've i've been historically not a huge fan of of this member in this kind of matchup i think that it, it becomes dead too quickly um giver does heavily incentivize me to play it though uh, so let's bring in at least one dismember maybe two of them over the explorers it's possible this member is just better than kogla honestly <laughs> Okay, what do we have here? We have the best cyborg card in the matchup. Of note, there's a new one mana white card now that can blow me out. I think I keep this though. Uh, we have great mana, we have a dryad. We're on the draw, but I do think this is this is a fine keep. Uh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, okay. For the same reasons that I did this last turn. Last game, I'm supposed to do it here. If I draw a Gracer, I want to make sure that I can cast it. And I, if I draw Explore, I can still cast it anyway, so... But yeah, we, we have to watch out for the one mana new card that protects everything from Force. So we may get blown out by that. Boseju is very nice. Um, yeah, I guess Boseju was a reason to... Yeah, I'm gonna play Gardens now. Just pass the turn back. I can also just play Boseju next turn to play the Dryad, which is fine. Play Hammer, okay, that's fine. So I think I'm just gonna Boseju you targeting the Hammer. And my opponent's gonna play the one mana thingy. And then I just force blowing up both things. Oh, they don't, okay, that's also fine. So one Hammer down, I take one. This uh, does time walk me, so now I cannot play Dryad next turn, which is a little bit awkward for sure. Second Stoneforge, okay. Tap land would be great. Gracer is also fine. Play Gracer, play Growth Chamber, bounce this, and I think I'm gonna play out Toleria West. Pass the turn. We can't we can't make it to seven mana nor six mana next turn, so that's kind of awkward, but still Shaper's Keep. Okay. Second hammer. Well, block one of them. Is one just gonna go for it here? I mean they probably have to, huh? Uh, the question is whether I want to blow up both hammers or do I want to blow up Sigarda Sade in response? I think I'm blowing up Sigarda Sade in response and at this point I am just pitching the Dryad because I can just hard cast this prime time next turn. It's possible I was just supposed to to blow up both hammers instead but I think it's close. Another summoner respect. Okay so I think the line here is gonna be to transmute for engineered explosives and play it for one. Transmute Engineered explosives, play explosives for one, say go. Next turn we do get to cast Primeval Titan, or we do get to crack these explosives, whatever we see is better. March of Otherworldly, whatever, light. All right, very happy that I chose to blow up the, <laughs> blow up the other thing. I'll take one here, this is looking fine. It's looking like, a, like an okay spot for the good guys. About to pack for a Titan, just, ooh, Saga. Don't mind if I do. Summoner's packed for prime time. Unfortunately, I can't, I can't cast the, the, the monkey, right? Uh, I think we get one Valakut in play, and then it's definitely important to get the first Valakut into play. 
and I guess I need a green source. I think I want that green source to be a bounce land. Might as well. So let's get a second growth chamber. And we're gonna bounce my Cosynth Gardens. Send the turn back. Opponent's got five cards in hand, which is a scary number of cards in hand. But we're gonna pay for Pact, and then it's not super, super likely that we die from here. Okay, but this seems okay. I think I just block one of these. My opponent can only have one hammer, right? So I take 12. Worst case scenario, they have what? Like another, what's his name? They have like another thingy. But like if I block and my opponent kills my Titan, oh, they have path? They have path, dude? That's busted. I've not seen path in so long. All right. So, pay for upkeep, I guess. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. I get, I get to cast another Titan. Pay for Pact. Oh, that one's cool too. What if I go for... I could go Pact for Dryad plus play Garbin and make a Construct so I can kill both. So, the thing that I'm scared of here is obviously Shadow Spear. I packed for the dinosaur. <laughs> I packed for the ape, I mean. Dude, packing for the ape is sick. This is insane. We packed for the ape. Next turn, we get an amulet, pay for packed. Oh, we're golden here. Oh, dude, this is sick. Oh my god. We're not going to be able to make a construct, unfortunately, but... Wow. Hell yeah. Packed for the ape, baby. Is my opponent going to path my Gracer? There's no way, right? Giver. Well, that's most likely dead. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to block. Going to block with Gracer. See if what my opponent does. They do nothing. Okay, that's great. Because that gives me the best. This gives you the most flexibility, right? Uh, okay, so now that kills my Saga. That's unfortunate. But it's fine because like I don't think I care that much about that. Because this doesn't answer... Yeah, so that blows up Saga, but this doesn't answer Dryad. My opponent has now zero cards in hand, and I have enough mana to cast a Dryad and then play a Primeval Titan, so they're, they're just super, super dead. We also drew an Amulet bigger, so... Makes things even easier. So... Uh, we have to make sure not to screw this up. So what's the best line here? If I play an Amulet, that's one less trigger. But it means I get to haste. Hasting seems good. Can I copy, though? If I copy, then I cannot haste. So I guess not copying is the answer. So we're going to play Amulet. Going to play first land drop. Play Dryad. Oh, man. We didn't get to Pact for... We didn't get to Pact for the, for the Ape. That's unfortunate. It's just unlucky, if you think about it. Uh, Slayer Stronghold Boros Garrison... Deal two there, deal two there. I'm not going to not kill my opponent's creatures, right? That's that's just not me. If you want me to not kill my opponent's creatures, you should be watching somebody else. This is very, very much a we kill my opponent's creatures channel. So swing with the dudes, get Valakut Vesuva, kill that. And I guess I could also kill the other Stoneforge, but I'm just going to kill my opponent instead. Unfortunate. This looks lethal to me. This looks quite lethal to me. Pew. Third round is here, and this hand is not very good. So let's ship it. This hand is better. Yeah, we're going to keep this one. It's better by a pretty significant amount. I think we're going to bottom... It's between Boseju and Cavernous Souls. I'm going to go turn one Saga. I think I'm going to bottom the Cavernous Souls. So this means we get to go turn one Saga, turn two Boseju Explore into Gardens, turn three hopefully go nuts. Okay, we're playing against Merktide, so I regret my decision of bottoming the cavern immediately. Play Boseju. We're, we're still gonna do the same thing that I just said though. Play Gardens, say go. If they tap out, they lose, straight up. Yeah, they lose, okay. So I guess they didn't have the counter spell. My hand was quite good. I guess they could technically have subtlety. Dressdown has been exiled. Okay, cool. 
Um, yeah, they could technically be main decking dress down, uh, main decking subtlety. Sorry, so should watch out for that. But I guess I'm not. I mean, it's Merc Tide, right? I'm not supposed to play around that kind of stuff. So copy amulet, make some mana, float, float, float some more, bounce here, here's another bounce land, play it again, float some mana, float some more mana, packed for Primeval Titan, cast. All right, great. So beating Murtite game one, obviously it's very, very good for us. Uh, now is the time for the ape to shine. Bring in explosives, cut colossus, bring in endurances, bring in fire spout. Uh, Voseju seems great, cavern seems great. We can cut these uh, sagas. We can cut uh, one gardens at least. And I like to cut at least a couple of amulets, potentially more. Uh, we do have a... I guess if we want to go the tracker route, this member route, then we're, it's going to be much different. Okay, let's just cut all the gardens and cut... I, I guess we're going to cut all the sagas and potentially cut some number of gardens. We're at 61 here. We like explore. We like gracer. Cut map. I think I do like some number of these members. And Kogla and Yidaro is kind of neat though. Let's cut a summoner's back. Bring in a couple of trackers. Let's cut one more amulet. We're going to have the, the, the one of fun of amulet. It's possible I should be cutting the one of fun of, fun of amulet as well. This hand is not going to cut it. Ship it. This hand is decent. Lots to like about this hand. I think I'm going to keep it and I'm going to bottom the summoner's pact, oddly enough. Um, but, yeah. So, play Valakut. Uh, actually, having Valakut out is nice because he allows me to fire spout if I need to. I'm assuming that I'm going to get Blood Moon here, but if I get Magist, then that's good. Shredder on two is bad for us. Fortunately for me, I'm a beast. So let's just play Cavern on Dryad here because it's the first thing that I'm going to play. If my opponent Blood Moons me, I get to a ramp, which is very nice. Oh my god. I guess they have to like connive with both. Okay, one of them, two of them. Okay, so now they both survive Fire Spout. Sad. Uh, we're going to play Dryad. Take two. Opponent knows about the tracker, but that's fine. Don't saddle Timmy, bro. Here's a bounce land. Bounce the cavern name in Dryad. Say go. Man, that bubble. That was a good bubble right there. That was a really good bubble. If my opponent hadn't had that, we would have been able to just Fire Spout and clear the board away. Would have been insane. Just don't have the heat. Not cool. We do get to resolve this tracker, but it kind of feels like we're gonna need to draw engineered explosives just to clear the board, away the board. Like we're, we're just getting raced very quickly. It's not the worst I've ever seen. It's not great either though. Um, so we're just gonna play a tracker and I guess I'm gonna play a bounce land. Subtlety pitching counter spell. That's fine. Uh, bottom there. Play Sanctuary, Bounce Forest, say go. We got a nice little two for one there at least. We need to draw Primeval Titan here because we're gonna die though. Uh, that's a Dryad. We don't have enough lands to get Dryad going. Uh, so my opponent kept Counterspell. We know that. Okay. Yeah, the double double Shredder. Man, like getting that Shredder there. Maybe I should have these members. Maybe I should have some, some amount of these, these members. Fire Spot looked very bad there. Yeah, let's bring in let's bring in this member over far spout. Uh this hand is not great. It's too slow. This hand is fantastic. This hand is absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna bottom one of these explorers, I think. And the question is gonna be whether I want to gracer on one. I think I do. I think we just gracer on one. Play my bounce land. Turn to Dryad. Hopefully we find the land. I guess the scenario went for playing explorer on turn two. Reason being, so I can... Well, now I now I would like to have a blocker, so... Yeah, so... I'm just gonna play it right here, get my extra land drop, and pass it back. Alright, so that's not great. That's a bad draw. That's cool, though. So I think I'm gonna play this, naming human. And I think I'm gonna swing with this Dryad. The reason to name human there is because if I draw... Like, I, I want to hold on to this, and I can just name giant with this one. I am, however, going to play out the Gracer so I have another blocker. 
But I think I want to hold on to this in case I draw a tracker. I can just play tracker, play a land, and get that engine going. It's nice that I, at least I do have this uh, monkey kind of blanked here, but <clears throat> iteration's good. Iteration is certainly quite good here. It always is. It's just bubble exiled. No land drop. Can I draw a prime time, please? From Evil Titan. Summon respect. Rule turf. I think I'm playing. Just playing Rule turf twice. Just have it, setting up to have more mana. But again, I already have Primeval Titan uncounterable covered, so I'm I'm interested in if if it were not an ETB, if if it had been an ETB untapped land, I would have just like done nothing there. I think definitely blocking here, no reason not to. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I love that. Oof. Ugh. I'm not gonna play this one out because if I draw Valakut, I want to have access to a land that I can just replay in indefinitely. But I don't know whether I want to name Elemental. I could also name Ape or Dinosaur. Um, that That's one of the good questions to ask yourself, right? Like, what do you want to name Ape or, or Dinosaur with with Cavern of Souls? Uh, so my opponent doesn't have Lightning Bolt. Otherwise, they would have used it last turn. Oh, they just have a Heat. Okay. Does that mean I want to... Okay, yeah, I think I want to play... No, I misclicked there. I wanted to play Girl Turf. Yeah, that was definitely a mistake. So I'm just going to name Giant here now. That sucks. That's that's a huge misclick, too. Uh, that's a massive misclick. Because now if I draw an ape, I can't make it uncounterable until two two turns for, from now. So that was that was a really bad misplay. And my opponent's just, like, throwing away unholy hits. Like, they're nothing. <laughs> they're, like, literally one of the best cards in the matchup. Um, well, that's good. They didn't want to draw that one. I also did not want to draw that one either. So that sucks. I think I'm going to bounce the one on Giant. Well, Monkey's going to start beating me down now. My opponent's going to have infinite mana. They're going to be able to hardcast a uh, subtlety at this point. Borrower, just hardcast. Interesting. Okay. Take five. Can I draw a spell? Growth Chamber Exiled. Poseidon. That doesn't do anything. Uh, yeah, I think I am going to want to multi-spell if I do find myself in a situation where that were to matter. So, nothing to see here. Just taking five every turn. Poseidon was exiled. Blood Moon. Oh no, Murktide. That's worse. <laughs> That's actually much worse. Because uh, now I'm dead next turn. Can I beat a Murktide here? No, I don't think I can. So I can play Cavern on Giant here and I can get this subtle teeth, but um, I don't think this really gets me anywhere. <sighs> Bojukabog doesn't save me. I don't have enough mana to like pact for a Dryad. Yeah, it's just one turn too late. This is this is the turn where, where Primeval Titan is just not enough. Uh, I, I also think it's going to get subtlety or dress down, so it probably doesn't really matter. But but this was the turn where this is just not enough. And the opponent taps mana and... What? Casts this subtlety. All right. All right, we lost against Merktide. A story in a tale as old as time. Round number four. Uh, and by the way, I want to point out that we did lose last game because I misbordered. So it was it was indeed my fault. That that game too, I, I definitely misbordered. I think if I had had this memory instead of Power Spot, I, I had a very, very real shot. This hand looks great though. Let's keep it. So we can go turn one Saga, turn two... Uh, turn one Saga Amulet, sorry. Turn two, explore into something cool. Turn three, make many dudes. Birds. Is this Yogg? I gotta imagine that this is Yogg. That's a fantastic draw. So now we have a turn three kill. So we have to hope my opponent doesn't have a very fast kill as well. But this is looking promising. This is most definitely looking promising. Ignoble. I think my opponent is holding up Boseju here. They pass the turn without doing anything. I have to assume that that's Boseju mana. I don't know which other interactive cell my opponent could have here. It is indeed Boseju blowing up my amulet. Here's a forest, and I think we just now get to just double explore, which is kind of nice. Okay, so we get to do that, then do this, and now, ooh, that's big. So do I bounce that? I think I just Valakut here. So we play out the Valakut. Next turn, we're going to be able to just cast Primeval Titan, unless they have another Boseju. I guess they, if they have another green source... They can go uh, play Yogmoth, hold up Boseiji, which would be pretty good. 
But if they don't, like if they tap out for anything, we have very much lethal here. I guess maybe I should have played around my opponent having removal for my amulet or for my saga. Yeah, because they may have like Liberator. And then if they play Liberator, crack it, they just time walk me. I guess that I was going to get time walked regardless because I cannot, you know. Okay. All right. So they do have Yogg, which makes things kind of awkward. But I think it's still fine. So float a mana, make amulet. This is... Yeah, I think we have enough. I think we have enough to do everything. My opponent cannot kill the Dryad. They don't have enough to proliferate. So... Means we play this out. Bounce here. Pact for Dryad. Play Dryad. Play this out. We don't get to trigger here, but that's fine. I could have gotten a trigger if I had play out Gracer. But, yeah. Just bounce here. We're just going to win off of prime time. So we're just going to serve. Get a couple of triggers for our troubles. And we, we, I guess we do just get to kill Yogg here. Game one is the game that we get to win. I mean, it's the, it's the game that we have to win if we want to win the match. Because games two and three are so much worse for us in this matchup. My opponent's going to have access to Necromancia. They're going to have access to Force. Potentially having access to Magus of the Moon. Games two and three are kind of a disaster all around so game one is is the one that we hope to to get there don't have enough opponent or one great mana short you cannot go get dry ever the last card in hand is cord yep sure you get to make my dry a little bit smaller yep dry it's an o2 dry is a minus one one still alive there's nothing they were drawing towards there i guess they were maybe they were drawing towards second boseju maybe that was their line so I guess that does make sense. Uh, Fire Spout seems good. This member seems good. I'm not a huge fan of Cultivator in a potential Blood Moon matchup, but I think we just have to keep it here because of specifically um, Necromancia. So bringing Kogla and Yidaro, maybe Tracker. I'm not a fan of Endurance though. I do like this member. do like Fire Spout. Don't think Explosives is good enough. Kind of want to cut a Saga or two because uh, Force of Vigor is such a beating. So let's cut an Explorer, maybe cut a Gracer, maybe cut an Amulet. I could also cut a Primeval Titan just to be a little bit better against Necromancia. Maybe I'm just playing around Necromancia too aggressively. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, is there a reason to play Boseju over Cavernous Souls? Because Cavern does fix me for Kogla purposes. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a reason that Boseju is better. Like, am I am I really blowing anything up with Boseju? I can blow up Dry Arbor, and that's about it. Yeah, that doesn't seem good enough to me. That does not seem good enough to me. Um, yeah, I just not. I don't love the Kogla. I feel like this. Yeah, this is probably not good enough. Even if like Colossus can kind of go off if we get lucky, Kogla just kills something and it potentially doesn't even kill Yogmoth if my opponent has a board state, right? Man, this hand would be everything that I want. This hand is literally everything that I want, except for a land. <laughs> uh, so I have to ship it. This is virtually a zero lander. This one's good though. I like this. I think I'm going to bottom the uh, Boseju because I get to play around Magus like this. But that that's not bad. It's a fine hand. Fine, fine hand. Opponent turn one fetches. Let's see what there they go get. Because this could be telling. Okay, so they do they do get overgrown tomb. Black thought sees on one. Interesting. I imagine they're gonna take summoners back here. They could take Gracer or Explore. Okay, pack down. Untap. Draw. Play Gracer. And I think I'm just gonna play out the Gruel Turf here. Set things up for future turns. Vesuba does act as a as a bounce land here, so that's nice. Opponent plays Misty and Fetches for a basic. Wall of Roots. So this is going to be an interesting turn here. Like, do we play around Blood Moon or not? I guess Magus of the Moon, not Blood Moon. Okay, we don't. <laughs> that answers the question. We we do not. That's a Primeval Titan. Okay, so I guess we go... Oh, man, this is close. So I think we go Forest... Because it's going to give me up to 5 mana, but I kind of want to hold up this member. So I think we just go 
forest gardens. This is better if I draw Amulet of Vigor, and this is also better if... I mean, I guess it doesn't make any difference if I don't find Amulet, because holding onto the Vesuva is fine, because if I, I... I need to copy this, and then I still can't cast Titan next turn anyways, so there's... I guess there's no real reason to do that. So we can just chill here, I think. If opponent does have Yogg, they're gonna get to draw two, which is pretty good. If they have Necromantia, I probably lose the game. I guess there's an argument there for dismembering the Wall of Roots, which my opponent only with three cards left in hand. Geist. Okay. Fetch. They have Evolution. Oh, they can't Evolution here. They can Cord, but they can only Cord for what? Two? Basic Swamp. Blood Artist. Okay. Scary. Very scary. So I guess... <laughs> is that a good draw? I think that's a good draw. I think it is official. That is a good draw. <laughs> ah, that was a silly top deck. That was a silly, silly top deck. I'm gonna kill my own Gracer here, though. Pretty unlucky, if you ask me. When his last card is Cord, that's good. It's certainly quite strong. Interested to see what they cord for here, because they're gonna be able to cord for three. So maybe Giraffe Messenger? Oh, for two? I thought they, they had enough cord for three, but it's only for two. So this is kind of just fine. So we lose five, six here, actually, down to 14. Then we're gonna kill one of these Undying creatures. Can my opponent kill me? So we're gonna be at 10. Opponent's board state is gonna be... So now opponent's board state is three. Yeah, I think we just do this right here. Bounce the gardens. And I think I wanna dismember just main face. Just kill that. Uh, this is bad. I guess my opponent would need to top deck specifically Chris, but this is better if they top deck something like evolution or something like that. So they can't cast Yogg. Can't cast Magus either. Don't know what they drew. I'm trying to think what blows me out here. Because I, I, it actually matters for me to play the Saga. Because it, it, ca it can be a blocker next turn. Uh, my opponent cannot force. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play this out. If they have like Nature's Flame or whatever, they get me. Now we get Prime Time into play. This is a blocker for the Geist. Um, I think I want to go... T West Growth Chamber. If I do this, I get to transmute for what? I get to transmute two turns from now, though. It's not good enough. Uh, that's probably better, though. Better than the alternative. So I think this is what I do. Again, I don't think that Bog does anything. I don't think that Boseju does anything either. So now we bounce this, this means that we're going to be able to transmute this coming turn. I guess the better line would be to just sit on it and just let the Saga pop and find Amulet and then transmute an Amulet in the same turn to play around something like Thoughtseize. So I guess we have the choice. Do we want to play around Thoughtseize or do we want to play around um, removal, like artifact removal? That, that would be the choice. When it has used one thought season, they probably have like three or something. So gardens cannot copy artifacts, uh, cannot copy tokens, unfortunately. Uh, that's a decent draw, huh? I think I would argue that that was a decent draw. So let's play Dryad main phase. And we're just gonna serve. We do get to make a construct to block. I've been top decking above average, I will say. These have been some above average top decks. I feel like if I clear the board, it doesn't really matter. So there's no reason for me to get two Balakuts and then get blown out by something. So I think I'm gonna go get Balakut plus another Saga. Gives me more stay in power. Like if I do clear the board, I don't think I can lose. And I already have Vesuva to copy my Balakut if I care about just going, like if, if I know that my opponent just does not have a way to answer my stuff. But they do. They have the Bosage. So happy with my line there. Not going all in. So now this is not going to do anything. 
but we still have lethal next turn. We do have a blocker now, so we do lose to, I guess, another Boseju. We do lose to another Boseju. We don't lose to Sorcery Speed Removal, which is nice. So play Mycosin Gardens, send it back. And so even something like Grist doesn't do it here. But obviously, like another Boseju or like any removal spell of that ilk is gonna is gonna kill me. Force of Vigor doesn't do it either. Do you have it, opponent? Don't slow roll me. Opponent does not have it. Opponent does not have it. Down to three we go. So now we're gonna get some some big blockers, which is nice. Oh, force on upkeep? Okay, pitching ignoble. That's annoying. It's quite annoying. I'm out of sagas now. Oh, I should have tapped this. Like, what am I what am I doing here? Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Now we just have lethal. Now that my opponent used the force, we just have lethal here anyway, so it doesn't matter. So we just uh, float three mana, play this, copy here, bounce, T-West, transmute for Dryad, lethal! Awesome. Last round, and this hand looks uh, quite good. Quite good. We get to go turn one amulet off of a saga, <clears throat> then turn two, we get to go explore into second amulet. And that means this can get Expedition Map, we can get Tolera West, go from there. Uh, yep, that seems also pretty strong. So we may get Spell Pierced, we may get different things can happen here. Sanders Lounge, so this is Creativity. Uh, does that do anything for us? Uh, this is a Ren, most likely. Oh, Territorial Cavalry. Oh, that that's much better for us. So this is just the, the Sue deck. Which is a pretty decent matchup for us. Just overall decent matchup. Um, so now we get to copy amulet. We get to have four amulets if we want to, which is pretty funny. That makes uh, effectively outrageous amount of mana. This deck that has does have a main deck Tower Denial, so that's gonna be something that we're gonna have to watch out for. Tower Denial is potentially a problem. We could Boseju you a blues. Source potentially, but they probably have like breeding pool or something like that, so not super likely to be relevant. Then again, I can also just like rip a primeval titan like a like a true professional. Computer kind of crashed there, and now uh, my opponent casts an ardent plea, which is a card. Dude, exalted. Whew, that's so hot. Fury, violent outburst, leyline binding. Look at that exalted trigger. Look at how much value that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good draw. <laughs> uh, sure. Let's let's get another amulet for shits and giggles. Let's get another amulet for shits and giggles. This looks way, way, way overkill. Just an unreasonable amount of damage. I guess I can go for a cultivator to get cute. Let's not. I am a coward. Um, so, T West, Growth Chamber, make way too much mana here. Opponent allowing me to go through the process. This is a fun process. I do not mind it. Bounce this, transmute, go get another Summoner's Pact. I guess two is enough. I just don't want to waste too much time here. So, let's just make incredibly lethal one and one one and one haste that one and haste the other one and now ten six and now ten six just casually swing for 40. oops i misclicked and i die on my upkeep oh whoops <laughs> well that happened um well i mean obviously i was gonna win this one but <laughs> I misclicked uh, my computer crashed and my thingy didn't work out like I, I just clicked one too quickly and my computer <laughs> couldn't handle it so yep uh, okay that's cool <laughs> that is cool you gotta love it when that happens um, sure thing all right I mean, I'm gonna die on my upkeep. I, I literally just lose here. I can't beat 
<laughs> I can't pay for both packs. Uh, well, that happened. Um, I guess that's that's why you don't concede, right? You can only take one. You get to you get to do the other one, opponent. Go ahead. But I mean, my opponent's showing me cards. They're literally dead. But like, they showed me that they're playing rhinos now. Why are they doing? I guess I guess that they just have to. I guess. So I guess I got some info on the way out, but that's weird. Uh, so they're playing rhinos with territorial cabu. So I, I definitely want engineered explosives. Uh, definitely want Boseju. I could see Kogla. Yeah, I think I like Kogla. I don't like Cultivator. Bujugabog seems bad. Man, that's so awkward. So they're actually playing. They're actually playing um, a Rhinos deck. It's crazy. Like value Rhinos or whatever. That's super weird. Uh, do I want to? Do I want to play around my opponent having a bunch of forces? Probably not. Man, that's kind of rough. That's a that's a that's a rough misclick. Uh, though I kind of deserve it, if I'm being honest. I'm gonna keep this hand. This looks fine. Um, I kind of deserve it for getting cocky. <laughs> so we get to go turn one Gracer into Bounce Land, so that we can get um, we can get um, Saga into play on the following turn. We do get. Uh, some value from Saga. I don't think I'm gonna expose the Dryad. I just don't have to. So we get to force my opponent to force, I guess. A little redundant, but we do get to force them to force. And then we get to make our decision from there. So let's explore first into another explore. Okay. So let's do that. And I'm not gonna play that I'm a little bigger, I don't think. Because we do get to at least get a 2-2 out of this deal, you know? That is so funny, though, that I just killed myself last turn. <laughs> last game. Let's see if I can actually get the 3-0 win. But it fetches for Indatha Triumph on my end step. Black green. Suspend footfalls. Times two. Kind of awkward for them, but... <clears throat> That's another saga. So at this point, maybe we can just, like, overwhelm my opponents my opponent's forces so we're just gonna do this i imagine they're gonna force probably this and the amulet oh both sagas okay that's fine this means i do get to keep the amulet uh, so maybe they have they pitched the cabo which was their clock which is nice they don't have bloodwing mana i mean they have five mana they're playing leyline binding so i'm assuming i don't have to worry about that and now we're just gonna get to play dryad and we just get to just hard cast, whatever. <clears throat> sure. Yep. I'm just gonna get to hard cast, hard cast primeval titan. So bounce here, play dryad, replay my land, paying for two. I guess for one. Um, I guess I missed. I could have, I could have hasted and dealt more damage. I don't think it matters. Like we're just gonna get to kill them before they show up. Like the primeval titan is gonna get to, is gonna get to find uh, what's his name anyway. I'm probably just pitching territorial cabos left and right. <clears throat> this game was extremely poorly played, but I don't think it matters too much. Because this prime time is going to find um, a way to transmute, and then after I do that, it's just easy game from there. Oh, that's a Boseju, but I don't think that matters. So, cast prime time. We're going to get T West and Garrison. Bouncing the Teluria West. And. I think I just chill here. <clears throat> Next turn we pay for upkeep, blow up Leyline Binding, swing with prime time, and I get to double strike it if I want to, or I get to do something else, some other cool stuff instead. Pay for upkeep. Um, heh, that's boring. Okay, guess I'll just pack through the Dryad and kill my opponent. So swing, yes, Valak it, Valak. Your face is the place. Throw a bunch of throw a bunch of mountains at my opponent's face and that's it. Um game number three changes. Don't think so. There's an argument for this member because of the Cabo and for Fury. Though I don't think Hardcast Fury is where this game is gonna go. Explore, as we just saw, was fantastic. My opponent's got force of vigor. Um hmm. I think this is fine. I think this is fine. Uh, there's an argument for bringing in the force. I don't think I want to. My opponent's got ley lines, but that's really it. So I don't think that's good enough. That's good enough for the Kogla, I think. 
just having force and vigor is seems good enough for Kogala. But I don't think that I want to be bringing in uh, actual force. Seems good. Keep it. I'm probably going to send back the second amulet. And I'm just going to keep it. Just do a fair. <laughs> Alright. That's funny. I'm just going to play it fair here. As fair as this hand can be, I guess. So pass the turn after playing amulet. Um... If my opponent answers my amulet, it's kind of nice for me because that means that they don't put on a clock. <clears throat> I do wonder whether my opponent is going to have four. So that's kind of the question. Do they want to play around force or not? Well, they don't. This is good for me. So now I get to like deploy my amulets one at a time. Then I get to explore here. Yeah, the, the, the lag is, is kind of killing me here. Huh, that's funny. Uh, I guess I get to explore again. Seems fine. So let's play let's play Gracer. Let's play Growth Chamber. And I'm just gonna develop my mana naturally. Bounce here. This means I have double blue now. So I just need to draw Primeval Titan. Saga. Saga really plays into force. Yeah, I think I'm I don't want to play into force. Particularly because if my opponent does answer my amulet here, like I kinda want my opponent to answer my amulet. They fetch three mana for Ardent Plea, six cards reveal, they get Kabu. They also have Blood Braid Elf, Violent Outburst. Opponents out there doing some crazy stuff. Um, yep. I'm doing this to play around force again, because otherwise my opponent just time walks me. So, here's the prime time. If they have the force, they're going to use it now. We'll see. Ha! 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 Force pitching force. My opponent had two forces. <laughs> My opponent had two forces. Just playing around force like an absolute champion. Uh, so we definitely want the T-West. We already have that covered. So I think I want to get T-West plus Boseju here. Alternatively, I could get just get a Saga. My opponent pitched the four, so it's extremely unlikely that they have another force. We don't have any packs to pay for. Let's just let's just get Boseju so I can blow up this if I need to. And I'm just gonna play the amulet right now. Uses my mana efficiently. Send the turn back. Now we basically have a have an amulet in the bank. Like we can just pop this whenever we want. We already have like my opponent can't lay line binding my prime time because I just get it back. So I think we have my opponent locked out kind of here. I think if they attack with Kabu, I just chomp with Gracer. <clears throat> Might as well. Allows me to play around Fury. So this is probably not going to soak any more than 6 damage. So let's soak it now. I don't know if I like the... I don't know if I like the concept of... Just cascading into... Into a Territorial Cabo. It seems like a little bit lackluster. Uh, I guess we swing... I think I just play out Gruel Turf. <clears throat> We're going to bounce T-West. Transmute for Summoner's Pact. Just packed for second prime time here. Just cast it. My opponent, if they have anything, they have to use it now. Otherwise, uh, the opponent's just dead. Slayer Stronghold. So now, even if they have, uh, what's his name, they can't even double block my prime times. <clears throat> so I'm at 20, so I'm not afraid of dying on the crackback. Because if my opponent has Outburst into take the damage... They ice my titan, and they ley line the other one. Is that the line here? I mean, I'm gonna haste. This means there's no. This means there's no. What's his name here, right? Okay, so that's a that's a free from evil titan next turn. <clears throat> so, not gonna argue against that. Uh, so we're gonna take five this turn, which is nowhere close to enough. And unless my opponent has blood moon somehow, I think we got this covered. I guess even, we even beat Blood Moon because we just like upkeep, blow it up, and then pay for Pact anyway. So I don't think there's any card in the format that beats us here. Discarding Fury to the Kabu. I, I don't know what my opponent's drawing towards. All right. So they're dead. Good old put 10 power into place. Coop. <clears throat> so we did end up winning this game 3-0. Feels good, man. Feels good. Uh, I want to say yes here. Pay for that. We're going to... Boseju, blow that up. Would like to, like to fetch here. 
So I think what we do is we just get Mycacid Gardens and something else. I guess we can get a Saga. Wait, how do we get cheesed out here? How do we get cheesed out? The opponent has force, that's how we get cheesed out. So I guess I don't need the second one. So this is gonna be 16. So my opponent needs to block. They need to block something. So what do we get? We can get gardens. I'm just trying to beat force of vigor here. My opponent's gonna be forced to chump though, so they can crack back for five plus six, 11 plus three at most. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna do my cousin gardens plus Poseidon. So we untap. Don't think we can really do this. So haste there, swing with both triggers say yes we get cruel turf i guess i'm gonna get cruel turf growth chamber and then we get vesuva sun home let's get cruel turf sanctuary and we're about to at this point i have beaten my worst matchup which is misclicking so fortunately fortunately we did beat the bad matchup and now we get to now we get to actually win the match 3 you know. So get Sun Home and what? Another Saga? Sure. So we stack our triggers. <clears throat> There's a Saga. And tap. Double strike that one. And tap. And tap Saga. Wait for blocks. It just doesn't matter how my opponent blocks. They're just. Because at this point, they just don't have lethal on the backswing. So even if they have a way to answer my stuff, it's just whatever. Pew, pew, pew. 3 0. 3 0 victory. <laughs> All right, so once again, we play the new card, never draw the new card. But in this case, we actually saw the possibility of, of actually going to get the new card. And that's one of the values that this card has, right? The fact that we can actually go ahead and tutor for it if we, if we happen to need that. It turns out that we drew like gods throughout the, this entire league. So uh, we just actually found something better to do against Hammer. But the fact that we were not just dead to whatever my opponent had at that point, because we had the option of just packing for the Koila and Gidaro and like just cycling it or like whatever that ability is. Um, it was kind of nice. It was kind of nice. So I can actually see this one uh, being maybe like a one-off in the sideboard. The fact that it also, uh, you know, sort of loops itself, like the fact that you can shuffle it back means that just having the singleton copy probably has a ton of value because we can use it multiple times with multiple packs. So that's very nice. Uh, but I think that this is a card that I'm interested in trying out. I was throughout the league trying to keep in mind whether I was able to go into the... It was possible for me to cast the, the, the ape if I happened to draw it. And the truth is that in the mass, vast majority of scenarios, before I resolve the Primeval Titan, I was not going to be able to have enough mana to, to, to cast it. Meaning that the very small amount of red sources that I have here, which is eight, uh, nine, sorry, uh, probably not enough to, to get the job done. Uh, obviously, Dryad fixes your mana, whatever. And, and again, like you only need a singleton copy uh, to, to get the ability, which is what you care about the most. Uh, but I imagine that uh, cycling is going to be maybe like... 80% of what we do with this card, right? Like, sure, you're going to cast it once every, like, eight matches or something like that, but uh, the fact that you get the possibility, right? Like, the fact that you actually do have the possibility, that is uh, the power of a card like this one. So excited to continue to try it out. Definitely going to have one in the sideboard at least for the next couple of weeks, maybe up to a month, um, so, uh, before I just get a, a good idea of how this goes. But it's promising so far. It's promising so far. Definitely, I was a little bit low because, you know, four mana seems like a lot. And it is. Like, it is a lot. Like, you are paying the cost of flexibility in mana. It's actually a very expensive card to cast. But it is... Uh, the, the effect is very powerful. And the fact that it just cycles itself whenever you use the ability is, is nothing to scoff at. I think that's going to be relevant uh, at least once throughout this card's lifetime. That's going to be it for me today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button on the way out. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.